Okay, let's settle down. The uh, topic for today is very important, as we know. It talks about the kidney. Can anybody tell me what exactly is the function of your kidney? Anyone? What to do? What does the kidney do? It filters what? It filters the blood. So when you say filter the blood, you are referring to what? Removing, what is in the blood that has to be removed and filtered? Waste. What kind of waste? Okay, nitrogenous waste. Nitrogenous waste means they have nitrogen in them, right? And what are these wastes that you are referring to? Urea, creatinine, and uric acid, right? So these are waste products. Do we need them? No, we don't, right? So, as we know, the kidney what? Filters what? Blood. And what does it remove from the blood? Nitrogenous waste. Just as what? Urea, creatinine, and uric acid. I'm just doing the shortcut. I want to conserve my ATP, right? <laughs> UA stands for uric acid. CR, not comfort room, but rather creatinine, right? Now, can anybody tell me how are these waste products produced? Creatinine is the the cells of the muscle cells, muscle proteins. Oh, that's creatine, yeah. creatinine. Okay, so well, yeah. so this is brought about by the breakdown of what particular food substance? Is it fat? Is it carbohydrates or proteins? Yeah, protein. There you go, okay. So these are brought about by the breakdown of what food substance? Okay, I want you to remember the word. Remember the alamo, remember the word protein, right? Protein is the building blocks of proteins are considered what? Amino acid. And does the amino acid have nitrogen in them? Yes. Yes, they do. Apparently, therefore, this contains nitrogen, the waste also contains what? Nitrogen. nitrogen. That's the reason why we call them nitrogenous waste. Because they are waste products, do we need them? No, no we don't. So what the kidney does is to filter, remove it from the blood, allow it to come out where? Urine. The urine. urine. A lot of people, when I ask them what does it filter, they will say filter the u urine. No, it filters the blood. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. In a class of 30 students, some of you would say it filters the urine. No, it filters the blood and brings the waste from the blood to the urine to allow the urine to come out into the toilet bowl or the urine. Yes, you have a question? Number one and three. What is what? Number one and three. What is one? Urea. 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 And what is number three? Urea. Perfect. Urea. Perfect. But that's the same as B-U-N, right? Yeah, wait, well, chill, chill, chill. Okay. <laughs> we are still on the waste products, okay? That's a diagnostic test, okay? So, the point therefore is this. The point therefore is this. Waste product, we need them, no we don't. We get rid of them, right? Okay, now, so what is in the kidney that actually filters the blood? The huh? nephron. The nephron, exactly where in the nephron does the filtration occur? Glomerulus. The glomerulus. And what else? What else? Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's review. Let's try to review. So what did I always tell this class? To be getting an A in this class, you have to master anatomy and what? Physiology. Because if you do not know your anatomy and physiology, you ask all these questions that can be answered by anatomy and physiology, right? Because if you know what is normal, then you would know what is abnormal. Let's begin. Where do I begin? This is the heart. This is the left ventricle. You have the aorta. Ascending. Arch of the aorta. Descending. Ascending because it goes up. Arch because it forms an arch. Descending because it goes down. This is called thoracic aorta because it's in the thoracic cavity. It pierces the diaphragm. 
Once it pierces the diaphragm, the moment it goes into the abdominal cavity, now it's called the abdominal aorta. It divides into two, right and left common iliac. Divides into two, external and internal iliac. The question now is, how many kidneys do we have? Two. Hmm? How many? Two. Which one is higher? Left or right? Huh? Left. left. Why left? Richard? Were you the one who said left? Somebody said, okay, left at the back, yes? I don't know. Because <laughs> the liver is on the right side. Okay, the liver is, the answer is correct. You might know the answer, but if you do not know why, you are in deep stool, right? <laughs> I tell you this, when I was doing review for classes for nursing students, sometimes they memorize the answers of a review book, but they don't know why. How many times did they take the nursing board exam? Eight times, ten times. And they come to me as if I'm a miracle worker, you know? They're willing to pay me $500 for a review in my illegal review center. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I did it in my apartment complex. Two bedrooms in my living room. I had something like this. I have a projector. And what did I notice? They do not know what the hell are they... Where is the kidney? Where's the liver, right? So apparently the kidney is here. The kidney displaces the, the liver displaces the kidney downwards, the right kidney is lower than the left. The left, the spleen is over this side here. Now, my question is this, what brings blood flow or oxygenated blood flow to the kidneys? Renal artery. What? Renal artery. Renal artery. What does renal mean? Kidney. Of course. Isn't that, don't you love anatomy? <laughs> you love it. Right? You should. You should not be a nurse if you don't love anatomy. Because when you're taking care of a human booty, that booty is anatomy by itself, right? Mm -hmm. So what is the name of the artery? Renal artery. Renal artery. And what brings blood to the kidney? The renal artery. What brings blood away from the kidney? Renal, renal veins. The renal what? Veins. The renal what? Vein. The artery is here. And where does the renal vein go? Both kidneys. Very good. You're the man. Okay. Go to the inferior vena cava. The inferior vena cava is like your 5 north freeway and 5 south. 5 north goes to what chamber? The right one. Atrium of the heart. The superior vena cava is here. The inferior vena cava is found below the heart. It's right atrium. Don't you notice? It's a big circulation. A circle. A circle is created. It's called circulatory system. What carries the oxygenated blood? Artery. What carries the deoxygenated blood? Okay. A while ago you said the kidney filters the blood. So what do you think, what blood vessel will bring the urea, the creatinine, and uric acid to the kidney? Is it the real vein or the renal artery? Artery. Hmm? Artery or vein? Of course. It's very simple. The artery brings blood to the kidney. What will bring the blood away from the kidney? The vein. vein. Yes. So how do you get this to go to the kidney? The renal artery. In other words, when the blood is passing through the renal artery, it carries oxygen. It carries these three waste products at the same time. Right? So when this goes to the kidney, it loves, it needs the oxygen because it's made of cells and tissues, right? So it gets the oxygen, gets the urea, creatinine, and uric acid, it filters the blood, and where does this go? Where does the urea go? The ureter? Remember the ureter? And where does the ureter go? The bladder? Which bladder? Gallbladder or urinary bladder? Perfect. UB? And then come up where you reach from, and then out into the urinal. So if we are to go now to the urinal there or toilet for women, you only sit down. You don't stand, right? When you make wee wee, <laughs> men we can stand. <laughs> can we also sit while making wee wee? Yes, we can. If I were to do a chemical analysis of the urine there, will it contain a lot of urea and creatinine? Yes, but originally it came from where? From where? From blood. Blood. Brought about by the breakdown of what? From the food you eat. 
right? Okay. So that's very basic normal anatomy and physiology, right? Now what about the nephron? That's the structural unit of the kidney. Being a structural unit, you have to review. From the renal artery, what comes next? A series of arteries, if you review your anatomy and physiology, interlobular, lobular, but eventually, the smallest will be the afferent one. Arterial. Arterial. Correct? And what comes after that? The glomerulus. And what exactly is your glomerulus class? What is it? What kind of blood vessel is your glomerulus? Yes? What? Somebody said something? Of course! And what is a capillary? Have you noticed every question I ask, you get the answer, I ask a follow-up question because I want you to develop what we call what? Deep learning. Because if you have deep learning, then that thing will be a problem. You get a perfect score in the quizzes. Perfect. Or if not, 28, 29 out of 30 items, right? Okay. A capillary is, as everybody knows, is what? The smallest blood vessel. It actually connects an arterial with what? A venial, but in this case it's unique because why? What comes after the glomerulus? Afferent is followed by what? Efferent arterial. E or A? E. A. E. One is afferent, A, here is efferent. In the normal scheme of things, the arterial, which is a small artery, will be joining the capillary here. And followed by what? The venial. What's a venial? A small vein. What's an arterial? A small artery. This is the cell. This is the cell, nucleus. Arterial carries red blood cell carries oxygen. When the red blood cell goes here, what we'll happens to the oxygen? High to low. The cell is happy. Where does this take place? Everywhere. Because we have capillaries everywhere. And what does the cell produce? CO2. So the CO2 will go here, right? From high to low, into the veins, into the vena cava, and then back to the right side of the heart. That's a normal scheme of things. But in the case of the kidneys, nephron, it's unique. You have afferent arterial capillaries called glomerular capillaries, the smallest blood vessel with squamous cells there. Then efferent, then you have what? Peritubular what? Of course, who said that? So you have two sets of capillaries, therefore. What did we learn all of these? It was uh, Of course. Can you repeat that? What was it? So you have two sets of capillaries, glomerular and peritubular. Oh, yeah. And what comes after the peritubular capillaries? Series of veins into lobular cells, and then eventually <coughs> becomes your what? Series of veins, then renal what? Vein, and renal vein gives rise to what? Inferior, vena cava, and where does the inferior vena cava bring the blood to? Back to the heart. What well, happens to be what? Right atrium of the heart. With other words, the blood came from the artery, which came from the aorta, which part of the aorta? The abdominal aorta, and the aorta came from what chamber of the heart? The left ventricle chamber. In other words, the blood that came from the heart goes back where? To the heart, but why did it have to pass through the kidneys? To filter the blood. So I'd like to thank the kidney on behalf of humanity. Uh, dear kidney, I have two, you have two. We'd like to thank them, because without them, we'll all be dead. Oh, no, 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 we have dialysis centers all over the place, right? Okay, so what does it need to know about these things? Well, very simple. When you're talking about the nephron, the glomerular capillaries is a blood vessel, so what will be passing through all the blood vessels here? Blood. In front of the capillaries called glomerulus is the Bowman's what? Yes. Then you have your what? Proximal, convoluted what? Tubules, then the lobe of, then this the what? Do you know what convoluted means? Coils, not coils. It's a specity. With proximal convoluted tubules, 
the loop of Henley, and the DCT. Then they're collecting what? Yeah. Ducts. Each kidney has one million nephrons. How many? One million. And therefore, if you have two kidneys, how many nephrons do we have, all of us? Yeah. Two million. That means you and I are multi-millionaires. <laughs> I'm not kidding. So again, thank you, kidneys. It doesn't press. It doesn't have any July 4 weekend break. <laughs> Whether you're asleep or awake, it does its work, just like the heart. It doesn't have any spring break, Christmas break. No. Okay. So when the blood passes here, the capillaries, together with the Bowman's capsules. How many of you were my former students in anatomy here? Raise your hand. Hmm? Let me see if I can recognize the faces here. <laughs> Nobody? Were you my former student? What's your name? Lily. Lily? What's the last name again? Azaya. Okay, Lily Azaya. Now I remember you. Anybody else? <laughs> no, no, no. What about you, my dear? No? No. Never had a student in anatomy or physiology. Do you remember what I said? The ladies at the back. Miss Lee, were you a former student? Me? Yeah. Miss Tio. Ah, Tio. Okay, I get confused with all this. Were you a former student of mine? Yeah. What class? Okay, what about the gentleman to your right? Yeah. Yes, okay, so the three of you, you are now in the firing range. Do you remember, whether it's lecture or lab, it doesn't matter. What did I compare the glomerular, glomerular capillaries to? Okay, because there is no more time. Have, have you ever gone to a kitchen? Of course, everybody goes to, goes to a kitchen, right? You have a, what they call a strainer, right? Well, what does a strainer have? Huh? What does a strainer have? What? What kind of holes? Small or small? Small or very small? Very small holes. In other words, take a look at this. If this were the strainer, there is an empty glass. Can you see the empty glass? Pretend there is an empty glass. Is the glass empty? It is. I get an orange fruit. The orange fruit is in my hand. I put the orange fruit on top of the strainer. I squeeze, I squeeze. What will go into the empty glass? The juice. The juice, that's the urine. What will stay on top here? The pulp, the seed. Why did the pulp and the seed stay on top? Because it is what? Big or very big? And the smalls are, the holes are what? I'm giving up the answer. <laughs> Shit, offer. And the holes are what? Small. Very small. And the seed and the pulp are big. Did it go through? No. What do you think is the pulp? That's your red blood cell. That's your proteins, your albumin and globulin Y. Are they waste products? No. No, they're not. The red blood cell, protein. They're not waste, right? What about the urine? What does the urine contain? Urea, creatinine, and uric acid. What does it simply mean? That those urea, creatinine, and uric acid were so small they went through the holes. Now, how do I convert this into a capillary? Very simple. All I need to do is create a tube. Remember the blood vessels are tubes, right? Okay, what is found in the wall of your capillary here? Holes. Holes. Or P-O-R-E, pore or pores. What kind of pores? Small. Very small indeed. Now, if you remember the anatomy of the afferent versus the efferent, in between the afferent and efferent is the capillary called glomerular capillaries. The afferent, if you remember your anatomy and physiology, the diameter of the afferent is what? Wider. While the efferent was what? Smaller. And what is falling between the two? The capillaries with the holes. So what did you learn about resistance and rages? If you decrease the radius here, what will be the effect on the blood pressure here? Hmm? It goes up. Remember radius, resistance, pressure. Okay. So, the efferent arterial is smaller, afferent is wider, wider, smaller. The pressure inside is greater. It's called hydrostatic blood pressure. Now remember what I did with the, the orange foot? What did I do? Squeeze. So, in other words, the elevated blood pressure there will squeeze the blood so that the, the blood will be what? Squeeze? It will come up right here. 
What will come out here would be urea, creatinine, uric acid, and water. What will continue to flow? The blood minus the urea, creatinine, and uric acid. Are you following me? Are you following me? Yeah. Okay, I like this guy. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Adjust. Okay, okay, okay. But him? <laughs> That's the kind of student I want. Focus, determined. Now, what happens when you have post streptococcal glomerulonephritis? Where the glomerulus is inflamed due to a prior, what, two week duration of what? Sore throat. Which causes what? An autoimmune disease affecting what? Damaging the glomerulus, becoming inflamed. What happens to the holes? Huh? Of course! Post streptococcal glomerulonephritis means a week or two weeks before the patient had a sore throat, autoimmune disease, the antibodies destroyed the glomerulus, causing it to become inflamed, causing the holes to become bigger or bigger. And what happens to the red blood cell? Goes it goes through! <laughs> the red blood cell goes into the urine. What is the normal color of the urine? Gold and yellow. Yellow. Pale yellow to amber. Pale yellow to amber. I'm sorry. Golden yellow with the stool. Golden yellow brown, greenish brown. But if it's this urine, it's pale yellow to amber. In the presence of blood in the urine, what is the term we use? Perfect. Are you expecting to find red blood cells in the urine? No. no. Are you going to call Dr. Gamma, the patient presents with hematuria? Yes. So are we going to understand each other? You're smart. I have to be smarter than you. Because I'm the doctor, supposedly. But if you can be smarter than me, I'd love that because you can get all A's in this class. It's exactly what I want you to do, be smarter than your faculty. It's the only way to be able to get an A in this class. Of course, you can always get an A. But because who will benefit? The smarter you become? Oh, big OMG, you perfect the exam in the nursing board, right? Okay. In glomerulonephritis, therefore, the reason why there is damage to the glomerulus is because it's an autoimmune immune complex disease, immune complex, right? And this for the patient comes to me and says, Oh, Dr. Gamo, I noticed my urine is what? Red. And I will ask the patient, Did you have any history of sore throat last week ago or two weeks ago? Yes. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Okay. Now, how would you know a patient has renal failure? Normally, our urine output is what? What's the normal urine output for hour? 30 ml per hour. Yes. Greater than or equal 30 ml per what? Hour. One hour. Right? Anything below 30 ml is considered what? Oligoria. Who said oligoria? You're the man. Of course. <laughs> Less than 30 is oliguric or oliguria. What is anuria? Zero. Zero. Urine output. Oliguria is less than 30 ml. And what is polyuria on the other hand? Poly means what? Excessive. Normally, a person like you and I, in one day, this is per hour, okay? Per hour. 1.5 to 2 liters of urine per day. That is normal. That's almost what? 2,000 ml. Now, guess what? How many kidneys do we have? We have two. One on the right, one on the left. Based on anatomy and physiology review, each day, both kidneys is supposed to produce what? How much of the filtrate is produced that becomes urine? 180 liters of filtrate. But at the end of the day, how much is removed? Only 1.5 liters. So what do you think happened to the 178.5? Huh? Yes? Who said reabsorb? You're the woman, of course. <laughs> the water was here. Everything was absorbed where? In the peritubular. Into the peritubular capillaries. Filter, reabsorbed here in the peritubular capillaries. How much was filter re reabsorbed? 
180. Filtrate. What do you mean by filtrate? The initial urine formed, but the bulk of it is what? Reabsorbed through the peritubular capillaries, thereby if you subtract 180 minus 1.5, you have 178.5 liters of water or fluid that has what? Don't you, don't you, are you not amazed what the kidney does for you? Why does the kidney need to reabsorb the water? Is water waste? Water is life. In fact, you and I are made up of 66.6666666% water. And where is this mostly found? Inside the cell or outside the cell? Where? Of course, because who needs this, the water? Is this common sense? The intracellular fluid compartment is bigger than the extra. Do you realize? Okay, now. So if you have a patient who comes to the emergency room with two week history of sore throat and then one week later complain of hematuria with red urine, and then I tell the nurse, this could be post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. The question now is this, what diagnostic test do you think I will order to determine kidney function? Kidney function or Treatment. renal function test? Treatment. Huh? Treatment. Creatinine. Treatment. Creatinine, yes. Okay, you are absolutely right. What specimen, what's your name there? Charlotte. Charlotte, okay. What would you send to the lab? Which specimen are you going to send to the lab to test for your creatinine levels? Shh, yes? Gold can, right? Do you remember? Yes, yes. Yes, what specimen? Would you like to call a friend? Yes. Who is your friend? Anybody here? Who would like to be my friend? Okay. Anyone? What specimen? Anyone? Yes? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Urine specimen. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Right, 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 right. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, that is the wrong answer. <laughs> I like it. Oh, yeah. But unfortunately, that's the wrong answer, my dear. It's okay. I think you try. I'm going to try to humiliate you. I just want you to realize, if you really know your anatomy so you can come up with the right answer. What does the kidney filter? Blood. Is this really true? Oh, blood. Yeah, yeah, duh. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I deliberately did not put serum creatinine because I wanted to know if you know. Because in the nursing board exam, when I did the review for nurses for eight years in my house, in my apartment complex for the first two years, in my house in the next six years, <laughs> students come up with the same answer. I will bring the urine specimen to the lab. And after one hour, I call the nurse. Nurse, what is the result of the creatinine levels? Silence for five to 10 seconds. And then, I'm sorry, Dr. Gamo, I sent the wrong specimen. I sent the, this is just an, Made-believe story, it's not true. Stool. <laughs> uh, that's even worse shit. <laughs> if, can you mind sending the stool? <laughs> I said the urine specimen, which could have been the correct answer, should have been what? Blood. Okay, blood specimen. And what is the normal value of your serum creatinine? 0 0.5. 1 1.5 millicavellates per liter. Now, what about BUM? Can that also be used as a kidney function test? And what does the BUN stand for? Blood, urea, nitro... and nitrogen. Isn't it amazing? Does it make sense? Give me a U, urea. Give me an N, nitrogen. Give me a B, blood. So what specimen are we going to send to the lab? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love this class. You're so smart. What's the normal value here? I have no more time. 8 to 12. 8 to 25. Oh, 8 to 25. So, when is Christmas Day? 25, December 25. So how do I remember these? 25, 1.5. So how would you know if the patient has acute renal failure? You would expect the values to go up or go down. And why? Up. What? Up. Why? Because it's 
So the kidney is not kidney able to what? Clean. clean or filter the blood. The urea remains in the blood. In a patient with acute renal failure, this would be greater than 25, this would be greater than 1.5. Do you understand? Yeah. Does that make sense? Okay. But make sure you know the right specimen. Now, what about your, uh, we, oh, this is one of the questions in the exam, BUN and creatinine levels. Um, creatinine clearance. What do you mean by clearance? To clear means to what? To get rid of the creatinine from the blood into the? Urine. So when the doctor tells you, I'm going to calculate the creatinine clearance, I need two specimens, and I need to have a 24-hour urine collection. So Dr. Gamo says to the nurse, urine collection, 6 a.m. of Monday to 6 a.m. of Tuesday, 24 hours. On the first day of Monday, I will get blood what? Creatinine. The following day, another get specimen of what? Creatinine on the second day. So again, remember, Monday 6 a.m., Tuesday 6 a.m., the 24 hours for urine collection. And I have a patient with a catheter, with an indwelling catheter, with a bag, euro bag. So this is, this is definitely will come out in the nursing board exam. On Monday at 5, uh, at 6 o'clock, you went to the patient, I'm here ma'am, my name is Miss Smith, I am the nurse assigned to you, I'm here to collect the specimen. At 6 o'clock on Monday, when you saw the euro bag, there was 15 ml of urine. What are you going to do with that urine? Keep that as part of your collection or discard? Hmm? Very good, why? Because it was accumulated before the 6 a.m. The doctor Gabo told you to do. Get rid of that. Now, so from 6 to 6, what about the following day? At 6 a.m., you saw 20 ml of urine here. Are you going to keep that or discard it? Tuesday morning at 6 a.m. Keep or discard? Discard. Hmm? I'm going to say discard. You, you want to say discard. Why? Why would you say discard? Because then it's after. Well, if it's after six. Eight. Did I say after six? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Did I say after six? That's how you fail an exam, believe me. <laughs> you add words to the questions in the test. Believe me, the reason why you don't get a perfect score, because sometimes in your mind, you saw the word after, but did I write, did I say after? <laughs> I said at 6 a.m., you went there, you saw 20 ml. So are you gonna discard or collect? Collect. Collect or collect? <laughs> and that is how you pass the nursing board exam. Being smart. Smart learning, my smart thinking. So when we collect the times that? Between six to six. Monday, 6 a.m., there is 10 ml gets card because that means you have to start from six to six. At six on Tuesday, you have to keep that because that's part of the 24 hour duration. Okay, now there is a formula for this. I do not remember the formula. The bottom line, there are four. There's a normal value for creatinine clearance. If it's elevated, that means the kidney is not filtering the blood properly. That means the blood. Now, you will notice here, creatinine is 1.5, BUN is 25. That means not all of the urea and the creatinine is removed completely, or else it will actually be zero and zero. No, no, no. If you were to get my blood specimen now, if I am normal, you would end up with these values. That means not all of the urea that is removed from the, the blood. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, what else, how do you, aside from these? One, two, three, creatinine clearance. You can also do your GFR, right? The mass flotation rate, okay? So there is a normal value for that. We normally don't do that. The bottom line, therefore, is the moment it's elevated, it simply means that the urea is not being removed. It remains in the blood, and that's the reason why it's elevated. So when I tell the nurse, now, when would I order that to be done? When the urine output is what? For example, it's two in the morning, when you tell me, Dr. Gamo, the urine output was from one to two is 10 ml. Is that normal or abnormal? Abnormal. And I tell the nurse, I want a stat creatinine examination done. You know what the word stat means? 
Stat means it's elevated. I want it to see if it's elevated or not because the patient could be in renal failure, right? Okay. Why, what, what prompted you to call me? Because the urine output was what? Less than 30. I think, did I say 10 or 15 ml? As long as it's a little below 30, you have to tell the resident physician that is a patient with uh, post treprococcal glomerulonephritis, patient is oliguric, right? That's the reason why. Do you understand? Okay, now, so you may have you heard of acute renal failure, acute tubular necrosis. What does necrosis of the tubules mean? Death, Death of the tubules, necrosis, acute. Okay, and what are the stages there? The first one was what? Oliguric. Second is what? Oh, prodromal or prodromal? Oh, no. First is what? Prodromal, then what? Oligoric And then the third one is what? Post oligoric, some will probably say recovery phase. So prodromal is just the beginning of the manifestations. What happens in the oligoric phase? The urine output is less, it's less than 30 ml. And therefore, it means that there is what? Increased BR gravity, possibly. What else? Uh, because you are having oliguria, what happens to the water? It's being what? Retained. That's the reason why people have what? Periorbital edema, bipedal edema, and sometimes you can even have ascites. Because you are what? Retaining what? Water. water. That's the reason why the urine output is less. When less water comes out, that means you're retaining what? The water, that's the reason why you have all, you know what edema means, right? Okay. Accumulation of water, periorbital, okay? Moon phase. Retaining water, you have bipedal edema, right? So what is that, fluid volume overload or fluid volume overload? I was not here, I was in San Francisco when this topic was discussed, right? Fluid volume overload, all kinds of failure, liver failure, heart failure, Kidney failure will lead to fluid volume overload, right? Does that, does that make sense? Okay. So, in other words, you're retaining, your goal is to get free, right? Yes? Um, you also said that our potassium level goes up in that phase as well. Yeah, there, in, in your book, there are regards to potassium and sodium, so make sure you're aware of the uh, levels that goes up. The other thing to remember here is that there is fluid volume overload here. Patient can die of pulmonary edema. So what would be the best thing to do? Are we going to do a stat hemodialysis? You know what's dialysis? A dialysis machine is nothing else but what? An artificial kidney. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, in kidney failures, you have pre-renal, intra-renal, and then what? Post-renal. Let's start with pre-renal. What does pre mean? Before the kidney. What does intra-renal mean? In the kidney itself. What is post-renal? After. After the kidney. So let's start with the easiest, which happens to be what, post-renal? What would cause a post-renal failure? Obstruction. Obstruction, very good. What kind of obstruction, my friend? Kidney stones. Kidney stones, of course. Four years ago, I had kidney stones. The pain was here in the left flank, because that is where you find the kidney. Very painful. I had to get out of the rock on the Lakewood Freeway on the 105. I called my wife, I told my wife, I have so much pain, can you pick me up in the gasoline station? What did my wife say? No, go home, take a side street. <laughs> <laughs> Being a good husband, a happy wife is happy life. Yes, yeah. I'm going like this. I had a scoliosis because of severe pain. I left the house, I came out of the car, he was, she was there in the door. And I was going like this, and then she goes, oh my God, is it really that painful? <laughs> she brought me to the hospital, and I had more the medical center, they did a scan, and lo and behold, the reason why there was so much pain, because the stone came from the kidney, it went down here in the ureter, as big as this. So it distended the ureter, causing so much pain. Now, I remember exactly a few days before that, I had hematuria. I went to urgent care, there was what, they did a plain, what is KUB? X-ray, kidney, ureter, bladder. Because I don't think they wanted to spend on ultrasound or you know, these business people. They just did a plain KUB, which is kidney, ureter, bladder, plain X-ray. And there was a white speck, which means a stone. Now what is the most common stone? 
Oh my God, is that the study guide? Calcium huh? Yes, yes, yes. I gave you a study guide, right? If you yeah. study the study guide, you'll get a perfect score. Believe me. What's the most common sound? Calcium. Now, what do you think the store I got? Calcium. Perfect. Okay. So, it caused some structure. There was so much pain, right? And they gave me pain reliever to send me home. Again, because it's a business enterprise, they don't want to keep me. Spend less on me. So, the following day, they told me to see the doctor, the urologist. Now, he, he found out I, was a, I used to practice medicine in the Philippines. I was teaching in the nursing school. I said, Dr. Gamo, what do you want? I can perform surgery where I can insert the scope and remove the stone or surgery or other one is um, just let it pass, natural birth, you know. <laughs> and I said, I prefer natural birth. All you need to do is drink 10 to 20 glasses of water, which I did because I normally don't drink water. What do I drink? Cocaine. <laughs> Not Pepsi Cola, but Coca Cola. Coke with sugar cane, you I don't even know what cocaine looks like. All I, I only see, see cocaine on television, on the, 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 the movies. How many of you have tried cocaine here? What's wrong with that? Is it, do you really? Honestly, I've not tried it, so I don't know. Anyway, going back to this. So, I drank the water. I was very relieved. I was a good patient then. Normally, doctors are not good patients. Okay. I go to the restroom. Shh. Shh. Finally, there's like a baby born to a mother. EDC. It's called EDC. Expected date of confinement after nine months. I was about to deliver my baby boy. I was alone. My wife was somewhere. I don't know where she went. I was there in my delivery room, which happens to be my toilet bowl and my combat bathroom. I was looking at the mirror. Naked, <laughs> with a big tummy, and I said, and I could feel the labor pains. <laughs> Not kidding you. I have shown this before, right? The vagina here, talk to me. This is the baby. Like the baby usually comes out like this, right? Push, 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 push. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the baby. But in my case, it was a different baby. So the baby. My vagina was my urethra. <laughs> so this is my penal urethra. I could feel... <laughs> it was so painful. The stone coming out. Like a, like a cephalic presentation. <laughs> it was trying to go in and out. <laughs> I said to myself, and my wife was not there to hold my hand. Is that called Lamas or Lamaze? Where, honey, you can do it. Push. Because nobody was there to tell me, so I, I pretended my wife was there. I said, honey, you can do it. Push. <laughs> Finally, the, it's called crowning. And the baby came out. And because of my medical instinct, I'm a medical doctor, so I grabbed my baby boy. I tried to resuscitate my baby. CPR was performed to no avail. Nine in the morning, by 9.05, I had to declare him dead. 9.05, <laughs> dead, in the J. Gamma Memorial Medical Center. <laughs> I brought, I had to bring my baby to Kaiser, because my Kaiser was my uh, HMO at the time, and they told me, your baby is calcium oxalate, which proved the book is right. Calcium oxalate is the most common stone. Now, let's say it's a different story. What about if you have uh, gout? What kind of stone would you expect to find? Uh, uric acid. Uric acid stones? No, you mentioned struvite. Where do you get struvite stones, my friend? You will get them. I'm asking. Mm -hmm. When she takes the nurse, nursing board itself, are you going to be beside her and him? <laughs> I want this guy to pass. You know the answer, but yes, but I hope he did not hear. What did, what did he say? When do you develop struvite? S T R U V I T E. Uh, where do you develop it? When? When? It would have to be with the gout. No, 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 no. Gout back. Hi, my name is Gout. What is your name? Uric acid. Stones. Okay. Hi, my name is Gout. What is your name? Uric stone. Hi, the most common kidney stone. What is your name? Oh, okay. Hi, my name is Calcium Oxalate. What would be your name? Kitty stone. Most common! Don't forget your first name. Say. 
Hi, my name is Yurik Asin Sol. What is your name? Gao. Hi, my name is Gao. What is your name? Yurik Sol. Yurik. Hi, my name is Most Common Kidney Stone. What is your name? Calcium Oxalate. Hi, my name is Calcium Oxalate. What is your name? Most Common. How can you not get a perfect score in this class? Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> Hi, my name is True Vice Stone. What is your name? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How can it be doubt it's really great assets? Process of elimination, my friend. How can that be the answer when it's really uric acid stone gout? It cannot be the answer, right? You're the one with the baby girl, right? Yes. Very good. What about your name? Hi, my name is True Vice Stone. Where? What's your name? Okay, what? My name is True Vice Stone. What is your name? Infection. Of course, where? In of course, the kidney. It's called pyelonephritis. Don't you love anatomy and pathophysiology? only? They're all intertwined. If the infection is in the kidney, it's called pyelonephritis, upper urinary tract infection. What is lower urinary tract infection? Bladder and urethra. What is the infection called in the urethra? Urethritis. What is the infection called in the bladder? Cystitis. So when a woman is having bladder infection, he goes to the emergency room like this. Now, I, I've been, I was trained in a government hospital in the Philippines. You just go into the ear, I already know what your problem is. Can you imagine if you see 20 patients a day or 30 patients a day? I deliver probably, when I was in the obstetrical ward, maybe 10 or 20 babies. So I practically, in my sleep, I could see the baby coming out. <laughs> And we used to do a lot of episiotomy. We make the vagina bigger, wider. <laughs> you know what's an episiotomy? Why do we want it to be wider? One o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock, twelve o'clock position, so that it will not tear. If you have an eight-pound baby and that will come out there, OMG. <laughs> what happens to your vagina? <laughs> I'm kidding. It will tear. Like this. The, 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 the cut will be like this. But if I cut it with a mm -hmm, straight, nice, those were the days. At 2 in the morning, I, I smell all this vagina. <laughs> <laughs> I had to deliver 10 babies. But I learned a lot. Oh, it was so nice, like a work of art. Skin to skin, oh my god. <laughs> So after, after the delivery, after a few months, nice, sec good sector. Honey, I'm ready. <laughs> now, I used to remember, because you have to do it properly. Are you going to do it on the six o'clock position? You must be crazy. What is found underneath the vagina? Huh? Uh, <laughs> urethra, vagina, anus. So if you're stupid, you're a stupid doctor, and you cut here in the middle, you go, go all the way to the anus, and you end up with a fistula. What does it mean? The stool in the poopo will go into the vagina. You might have sex with your wife with the... Okay, going back to this, therefore. So, when the stool was removed, it was calcium oxalate, struvite, kidney infection, pyelonephritis, and then gout is what? Uric acid. There's a reason why the gout will not kill you, because it causes a lot of joint pain and swelling, arthritis, but what will kill you would be what? Gouty nephropathy. Nephropathy means possible kidney damage. Okay, so that is post renal obstruction. Anything that is what? Stone there, stone, or any congenital anomaly. What about a benign prostatic hypertrophy, prostate enlargement? Can that also cause our obstruction? Yes. yes. Like me, I'm 50 plus years old. When the prostate is enlarged, I have to wake up three or four times a day at night. Why? Because the presence of the enlarged prostate gland will con con lead to what? Incomplete emptying of the bladder. Like 10, wake wee wee, sleep at 2 o'clock, I wake up again, why? Because not all the urine comes out, it remains, then it, I hate this. But what can we do? That's part of life, right? Prostate enlargement is called BP8, Brunine, Protastic Hypertrophy. How do you check for that? You do a what? DRE. Remember DRE? This is the rap singer. DRE means digital rectal examination. Finger, gloves, KY, bang! And you know the reason why. Because if you insert your finger into the rectum, in front of that is the prostate gland, okay? Now, what is intra-renal? Intra means the problem is here, in the kidney itself. It's usually due to what? Glomerulonephritis, to streptococcus, what else? Drugs such as what? 
gentamicin, garamicin, these are called nephrotoxic drugs. Nephrotoxic drugs damage the kidney itself. You understand? Nephro means kidney is damaged by the toxic substance. And that will come out in the nursing board exam. Many of these drugs end with what? Mycin. So gentamicin, or what they call garamicin, streptomycin. These are called aminoglycosides. And what are these drugs called? Nephro what? Toxic drugs. We'll discover it in the nursing board exam. Yo. So the good thing about this drug is good for gram-negative bacteria. So if we need to give this, we have to monitor the BUN creatine levels. If it starts to go down, we might lower the dose, or if it continues to go down, it, it means uh, uh, elevated, I'm sorry, then you may have to what? Stop it completely and give a broad spectrum drug which can kill both gram positive and gram negative organism. You understand? Okay? So struvite in infection. Now, what about pre renal? What does pre renal mean? Here, before the kidney. Like what? A blood clot here. What is that? Renal artery what? Thrombosis. What do you mean by renal artery thrombosis? There's a clot that most likely came from the heart. Like when you have atrial fibrillation. Uh, uh, fibrillation here or arrhythmias, the clot travel here, causing air uh, obstruction of the real artery, there is no blood flow, you have what? Pre-renal cause. What else? Anything that lowers your hypo hypovolemia. Remember the word hypovolemic shock? Stab wound, gunshot wound, diarrhea, what happens to so the blood volume? It goes down, it's called hypovolemia and hypovolemic shock. If there's not enough blood, what will the kidney filter? Less blood, less blood. That's why you have oliguria. In fact, the first organ affected in hypovolemia is the kidney. There's a reason why. When the patient has diarrhea, we immediately insert what? Indwelling catheter, especially if we consider the possibility that there is too much dehydration in this patient. Do you understand? So pre-renal simply means it's before the kidney, interrenal inside the kidney, such as nephrotoxic drugs, or streptomyces, streptomyces, <coughs> and then of course, post-renal means what? Obstruction or anomalies here, like, or BPH. Another common cause of infection is there's what? Ascending infection. Infection here goes up, going into the, when you have reflux, what is reflux? Backflow, okay? Like a BPH, stones, it causes the urine to go back, what happens if the what urine goes up? What happens to the kidney? If the urine there's an obstruction here, you develop what? Hydro. What do you say? Very good. Hydronephrosis. What does it mean? Hydro means water. Because there's an obstruction here, it goes up. You have hydronephrosis. Can that be seen in ultrasound? Yes. yes. KUB. Not so much because it's usually stones, but definitely a scan will show that. So you have to get rid of, of the obstruction. Do you understand? Okay? Now, in regards to the reproductive, uh, I do not have the time now, but I hope you know what is the definition of all the terms I told you, like menuraja, meturaja. At the same time, what is epispagia and hypospagias? Hypo means the uterine meatus is below here, so every time you make wee-wee, <laughs> if it's epi, it's like a fountain. <laughs> Is that good? You're laughing, my goodness. You understand what I'm saying? And then, of course, in the definition of endometriosis, it's very simple. A woman, you know, this is the uterus, this is what? <laughs> Cervix, and this is what? The vagina. <laughs> Remember, you came from the vagina of your mother, all of you, except me because I was by, born by C-section. Okay, in endometriosis means a woman menstruates every month, right? 14 days, oh no, sorry, menstrual flow is 28 urine cycle, right? 28 day uterine, uh, uterine cycle. When the, when the uh, what, um, endometrium was sloughed off, because there's a decrease in what? Progesterone levels. The progesterone was supposed to maintain pregnancy, but you did not get pregnant. So without the progesterone, the endometrium will die and will slough off. That's why every time you have menstrual bleeding, it is not just blood coming out, but at the same time what? The endometrial tissue. I don't know, I've never experienced that, I've never been a woman. 
So if you're not sure, then experiment. Get a filter and then, oh shit, it's not just blood coming out here. It's actually what endometrial tissue. Get a strainer if you don't believe me, okay? I don't know. Okay, so. <laughs> Unfortunately, you expect the endometrium to come out in the vagina. So you have vaginal bleeding for four to five days. Right? Is it true? Four to five days? Yes. Some women, four days, five days, right? So, unfortunately, endometriosis, not because, remember this? Not all the endometrial tissue comes out here. Some of them are what? Go out there and then what? Where do they go? They can actually cover what? The ovary. That's why you're surprised you're not pregnant yet. You've been married for five years. But though, because why? The endometrial tissue is, being, is covering what? The ovary. How can the egg be released? Not only that. The endometrial tissue is what? Spread into what? The pelvic cavity. So there's so much what? I remember my cousin had that severe pain. Once he got pregnant, I think it changed the pathways and two babies. Do you understand what I'm saying? Is it very painful? Yes. Now cervical cancer, what is the, we do a pop smear, correct? Yeah. It's a screening uh, test for a pop smear for cervical cancer. What is the organism causing it associated with it? HPV. And what does HPV mean? Human papilloma virus, okay. And how do you get this virus? By eating? Of course, so uh, now we even have a vaccine for both girls and boys, right? Um, and then at the same time, the most common manifestation is what? Vaginal bleeding. When I was a medical student then, because I would rotate in the obstetrical ward, what is the most common risk factor for these? Multiple part, I'll answer my own question, okay? Women with multiple partners, or women who have sex at a very young age, okay? So who are these women with multiple partners who are pro at risk of developing cervical cancer? Prostitutes. Now, if you are a prostitute, I'm not trying to put down that uh, oldest, uh, profession. according to young lady, oldest profession. So a prostitute, and they need the money. I feel bad for them. A guy wants to have sex with them, they pay them. What if the guy says, I do not want any condom? What can they say? Nothing. So they end up having sex without the protection, and they get infected. I used to read there was this 25-year-old woman with cervical cancer. I felt bad because she was so young, you know? And the amazing thing about this is that when you have cervical cancer, OMG, they come to the emergency room. It's like a faucet that's leaking, blood all over the place. I, I, I came from a third world country before I came here, so these are poor people. and. Uh, I just feel bad. We are placed on the lithotomy. We do the vaginal packing to stop the bleeding. We schedule it for surgery. But what's really sad because what really gets me is, it's probably one of the reasons why I did not want to become a gynecologist, because of the smell of cervical cancer. It smells like rotten meat, fish, or even a rat or you know, a mouse in the, in the room that has not been detected and it smells. I would even wear 10 or mask, I could still smell it. And it's so, it's so difficult because you have a patient who's dying in front of you and you, you can't help it with the smell. And we try to do everything, but again, that's cervical cancer for you, okay? Ovarian cancer, well, my aunt died of ovarian cancer, she was 90 years old. And the problem with ovarian cancer, the ovaries are too small. We just say cadavers at UCLA, there's cadavers actually, when you get old, as small as this. But if you do not remove them, you can develop what? Ovarian cancer. So in, the, in the case of my aunt, it spread all over the place. So they called me, Dr. Gamma, what do you think we should do with your aunt? I said, if it has already spread to the pelvic cavity, no need to do surgery. Palliative treatment, hospice care, and she decided to go home to the Philippines and die there. So, because if you do surgery on these kinds of women, they could bleed inside the operating room. It will probably even shorter, shorten their life, right? The problem with ovarian cancer, unlike when you have cervical cancer, there's always what? vaginal bleeding, then they go to the hospital. Women with ovarian cancer, they don't feel anything except, mm -hmm. it's not just like a you know, gas pain or what, and then you have weight loss and all these things. So it takes time. By the time you diagnose, it probably stage three or stage four, okay? Okay, I'll give you uh, four minutes, five minutes to uh, rest, and then we'll have a quiz, okay? Uh, I will collect that after the quiz, after the break, after the quiz.